So when I think of alien abduction, I think of the film Fourth Kind, which freaked me out, mate. The Fourth Kind is on another level. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend seeing it. But other than that, I've not really heard any stories. I've not seen any documentaries. I've just heard that people claim sometimes that they've been abducted by aliens. And a lot of the time they have like experiments put on them and stuff like that, like made on them. And I, I think also if you're ab abducted by aliens, there's a high chance that you could be abducted again. Like some people claim to be abducted multiple times throughout their lifetime. So it, like, it's something that I don't want to write off. Now there is a theory, which I did mention in my like little, little mini documentary thing. There is a theory that when people get abducted by aliens, it's actually sleep paralysis, right? So when you wake up in the middle of the night um, and you can't move and you can't shout and you just like see an image, like you, like a freaky deaky person in the corner of the room or something, it's just sleep paralysis. So I really wanted to, for the first time in my life, listen to a real story of somebody who claims to be or have been abducted by aliens, okay? This person is called um, Travis Wilton and he's come on the Joe Rogan podcast. What do you remember from that moment on? Uh, when, I, when I regained consciousness, it wasn't real quick. It wasn't real walking right up. Uh, it was real slow. It was dim. Uh, my consciousness was kind of like in and out for a while. I didn't know where I was. <clears throat> the pain and the feeling that, that I was mortally wounded, something, uh, something was so wrong inside. I, I felt like I was dying. And this is what really fueled the panic when I finally laid eyes on these creatures. Uh, of course, you know, all of the uh, mental programming that we get from Hollywood that uh, aliens are invading monsters, you know, didn't help. Uh, yeah. But I instantly associated this feeling of, of dying with pain with them. So I was combative immediately. Uh, Where were you? I was lying on my back on a raised table. There was a light above me. Um, it was not real bright. It was um, not so bright that I couldn't, um, you know, see the outline of the of the fixture. But uh, what did the um, fixture look like? Kind of like that, only much larger. <laughs> uh, just a soft uh, glow. And uh, in the movie, there's a little bit of striking on the part of the aliens uh, against me. Uh, that didn't happen. I lashed out at them. The one closest to me, I, I felt really weak. I didn't have enough strength to to do much so mate what film is it they're talking about man i gotta see that when i is it the third kind maybe i don't know mate i was a kid when i saw the third kind my arm contacted him he just fell back very unexpectedly easy into the other one and i rolled off the table in the other direction and uh they came around the table, and the three of them were coming towards me. Oh, mate. And I just grabbed something from behind me, an object off of the uh, shelf there, and started swinging it at them. What was the object? It was just some large, uh, long cylinder or rod, uh, glass, some clear material. Oh, man. Whether it's real or fake, right? You can see this guy's legit had that experience. Whether it, whether it's actually true or not, in his mind it was true, and he was experiencing all of that. Man, this is freaky as f. Wasn't studying it. I was looking at them and swinging wildly, screaming threats. They stopped, and I was planning on attacking more fully, just making way past them. The only doorway I could see was on the other side of them. And it looked like a doorway? 
Yeah, it looked like a doorway. Just, uh, you know. And what did they look like? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Good question. Good question, Joe. This is exactly what I was going to ask. I guess it's a pretty typical description nowadays. Uh, very large eyes. Uh, hairless. Um, oh, mate, just the big eyes alone would freak you right out, right? My God. And so the question is, why is it that there's so many images out there and all those images of aliens, when you depict an alien, they look like that, like grey, big eyes, small mouths, big heads, you know, skinny. Like, that's weird. Two eyes, nose, mouth. I didn't see them speak or no change in the expressions. Just like t t probably using telepathy or something. And... Uh, to me, that uh, in in the face of all the screaming and uh, the fear that I was uh, projecting, uh, their lack of reaction probably just added to my panic. But, oh, uh, man. Did they feel like they were a living creature, or did they feel like they were a robot? Like, well, they were without expression. I'll say that. But you know, I've had forty five years to think about that. And in more recent years, I think well, maybe. If they're telepathic, yeah, and it's developed enough to where they don't need to talk, they also don't need facial expression. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's and a so good point. So their ability to communicate with each other would be much richer and more complete than we have. And speech and frowns or smiles or whatever would become obsolete pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is a, a theory about where human beings are headed. If we continue yeah. to evolve, that we will one day reach this point where the biological limitations of our monkey bodies will. This is exactly what I think, mate. I think, but you know, there's well, I, was, it was, I don't think it. It's a theory of mine that we are the aliens, and we're just going to end up evolving into them, mate. You know. Slowly start start to fade away, and we'll have uh, different abilities. Different abilities. To well, why would we need to uh, uh, frown or yeah. smile if if you can save much more? And also, well, maybe they've all got Botox, and you can't see what they're doing. So their their musculature. Did their musculature? Did they look like smooth? Like they had no no they're, clear muscles? Yeah, they were pretty smooth, very light. When I when I hit the one, it fell back into the other one pretty easily. It, 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 like he weighed hardly anything. Like a little wow. kid. Yeah. Poor bloke, I feel so bad that for him. That was the most terrifying experience of my life. I bet, mate. But I bet. When I when I tell the story and, and try to relate to people, I'm trying to communicate what I experienced and how utterly, utterly traumatic that was and how it was so devastating. I was, you know, on the verge of catatonic for weeks after it happened. But uh, uh, I don't I don't want to relate this story in order to. Uh, inspire fear because I've had enough time to think about it that I think that it was unwarranted that my reaction was uh, just due to my ignorance of the situation. Oh, I don't know, mate. That's your, that's your gut instinct, dude. You know, you, you did what you felt that you needed to do at the same time, you know, at, at, at that particular time, sorry. Um, the fact that I was returned at all is pretty significant, you know? Mm, yeah. Uh, the idea that these beings are just uh, kidnapping people willy-nilly and doing terrible things to them, I, I don't s subscribe to that theory. Now, oh. I try to separate what I actually experienced from things that I've concluded just from thinking about it. But but he also said at the beginning that he, he when he came around, he felt like his insides, he was dying. So what is it they did to him? It seems to me that... Uh, I mean, they've been seen, uh, observed. There've been sightings for all you know before I was born. Had you heard of the Betty and Barney Hill story before you were abducted? Uh, I probably had, uh, but I know what Joe's doing there. He's trying to he's trying to connect the dots as to why maybe he was influenced. Do you know what I mean? It's a polite way of saying, do you think you've been influenced from previous stories? 
So if he had heard nothing about any aliens whatsoever and came out of this story, then, you know, it's like, holy shit, where, where is this guy? It, it must be the truth. But if I, I thought if they had some sort of sinister intentions, it'd be a done deal. They wouldn't be sneaking around, hiding, and uh, right. um, yeah, I, I believe with that level of technology. Look at it this way. Human beings, just virtually everything technological that we have is just a few hundred years old. Yeah. Before that, the most technological thing we had was fire. And in just uh, the last uh, 50 years, the progress of our science has grown to oh, far overshadow everything we had accomplished in thousands of years before that. Well, that's what they're saying, isn't it? That the um, the Roswell incident, they collected uh, technology then that we're using today. So, like, they just gradually sort of releasing it year after year after year. That's a theory. So I'm thinking um, what astronomers tell us about these other star systems is that they could be hundreds of thousands, millions, or maybe billions of years older than us. So if we accomplished the kind of technology that we have in a few decades, what is possible with millions of years of development? Mm. I mean, we couldn't begin to recognize what they're capable of. Mm. Uh, so I think it's presumptuous for people to say, oh, they could never do that. Oh. It re really is a, an interesting conundrum because we know what we can do and we know where we came from. We have a very clear history of technology when it comes to humans. And we also know that there are planets surrounding stars all throughout our galaxy and all throughout the universe. But we're still skeptical. It's so funny. And yeah, so it for, is. It is. But for a guy like you, who's actually encountered it. See, there's a, I can't remember what theory it is. There's something like a paradox, something paradox, where they say that if, because he was talking about technology, if the technology on other planets somewhere else is billions of years more advanced than us. So if we've got technology of a hundred years and they've got billions of years, then we should be seeing more aliens. We should see aliens all the time, but we don't, which proves that there are no aliens. Even though you saw it, it, it had to not seem real. Oh yeah. You're questioning your sanity for sure. I mean, yeah. it was like, uh, I was uh, practically catatonic for days afterwards. Okay, so that was his experience of seeing the aliens. Let's take a listen to what he says about seeing the UFO. What do you remember when you're going through your mind and you're trying, I mean, this is a story you've told so many times, and this is a story that's been turned into a film, which it's got to be very surreal. But when you look into... What film has this been um, turned into then? your memories and you try to go back to that day well i don't try it it's something i try to block out but uh oh, it's un it's unforgettable and there's uh, what do you remember seeing when you ran into the clearing well um uh, the whole clearing was lit up with this weird glow uh, it's really hard to uh for any artist or movie to <laughs> try to duplicate the the strange uh um, glow there was there made everything. wow do you know what i've also i've often thought that okay about like the colors now we can obviously see like if you think imagine the spectrum like the the spectrum of color the color wheel imagine seeing a color that we can't we haven't seen yet there must be a color out there that we haven't seen yet you know like something that you can't quite explain and I'm not talking like ultraviolet and things like that. I'm just talking actually a color that we ha we can't explain, but it's it's a mix of everything. You're probably thinking, hang on, no, we've got every color in the whole spectrum of the wheel. I don't know, but it it's weird that he says that. It just made me think of that, of a color that we haven't seen yet, that's yet to be developed. Uh, look, really, really pretty eerie, you know, and... Uh, uh, Did it have a color to it? Oh... Uh, it was kind of a golden color, but with a kind of a softness to it that was, it wasn't like uh, beams of light shooting out. It was just this, um, 
haze of, of, of light. Like an aura. And did it seem to come from a specific part of the craft? or Most of the surface seemed to be glowing. There were darker areas that didn't uh, give off light. But oh, so the actual surface was glowing. The actual like material, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, the parts that weren't glowing. It wasn't so hard, uh, bright, to, that you couldn't look at it. Uh, but it uh, had a metallic look to it. So what did the craft itself look like? It was um, a classic disc-shaped uh, craft. Um, the uh, <laughs> years later, uh, um, there was a report. Uh, I can never remember names, but this guy was saying that uh, he worked at Area 51, and they had something in there. He worked with the Tester Model uh, Corporation to create a model of, of what he was describing. And that, that's actually the closest of uh, any of the other descriptions I've seen. But I don't, think, uh, I don't think these things have just one type of craft. I think there's many, many different shapes. What makes you think that? Well, personal experience. Uh, I, I also think that. I think, you know, look how many different types of vehicles we've got, right? Loads of different types. I think there'd be different types for how many people, what, you know, how, like, maybe some for speed, some for agility, some for sheer mass, some for, like, longevity. You know, there's going to be loads of different types of um, spacecraft, I think. I can't help but feel sorry for this guy. I also respect to him as well, because <clears throat> to come out, and start talking about these crazy stories is literally that in itself. Like you, you could come across so crazy and be locked up or alienated, no pun intended. Um, but yeah, I feel sorry for him. And fair shout, mate, going on Cho Rogan and talking about this. I, I There's a film about this guy or his experiences? I don't know. Leave me in the comments. Like, What film are they talking about? I try not to emphasize these other incidents, but I've seen the uh, um, glowing sphere. I've seen the giant black triangle. Um, um, so he's seen multiple. He other, said. other craft that were um, a ball of light that you couldn't penetrate the light with your eyes. But uh, Now this is after this experience. Um, I think the reason my brother Dwayne was uh, persuaded more quickly than my brother Don was that he saw a craft in the, those woods, well, was probably 10 miles from there, while deer hunting, and uh, it was kind of tic-tac shaped, and that's uh, something that's uh, oh. been observed by, you know, in military reports recently. Yeah, that tic tac, that white little tic tac thing, go crazy speeds over the uh, over the water, over the ocean. Wow. Yeah. So you see this thing, this uh, this disc shaped craft, yeah. and and then what happens? Uh, it started to move and started to get louder. Louder. Yeah. It was uh, the guys in the truck heard it too. Uh, there was a low uh, um, thunderous kind of a rumble that you actually sort of felt more than heard. And then there were other high, high pitched frequencies. I was talking to a group of uh, um, students from a technical college, and they were really interested in what the sound was like to try to. You know, compare that with the uh, theories that they had concerning what might be their propulsion. But you, you have these ideas, so you go <laughs> like that, that type of sound. I don't know where that comes from, but that's whenever I think of an alien UFO, I just think of. <laughs> but, uh, uh, the increase in volume, it, it suddenly got louder as it started to move. And 
you know, at the same time, the guys in the truck were screaming, get away from there, you know, let's go, let's go, get back in the truck, let's go. And, uh, which would have been the smart thing to do, but as soon as it moved, that startled me. And I just- I wonder how big this thing was, does he say that? Just ducked for cover. Uh, there was a log there, I, I got down behind this log, and they were screaming, let's go, let's go, let's go. And uh, I uh, didn't need to be told, I was just gonna, you know, stand up and run away. But see, when I, when I jumped for cover, I, I, I went down and forward to reach where the log would hide me. And uh, that brought me closer to it. What? So when I stood up, at that point, that was the closest I was to the object. How close? So he jumped away from it, and he ended up being closer to it. So as he jumped, maybe it just sort of like sucked him back. What? That's crazy. Uh, I, I, it was still like eight or ten feet away, you know. Ten foot? Holy moly. He's saying that as if it's like some distance. That ain't, that, that ain't much, mate. Uh, from the surface of it. But that was when the energy discharge happened. Oh, what? Um, I've worked on a number of theories about what might have happened. At the time, some of the other guys on the truck were thinking, uh, I mean, immediately Steve said, it got him. Like, you know, if you shot a deer, you, you got it, you know? Right. And so uh, it might not have been as we assumed at first that it was some kind of stun gun or something, but uh, maybe just closing that gap uh, allowed this energy to leap to ground through me. And uh, like static electricity or something. Yeah, one thing that really uh, weighs heavy in that direction is uh, that when uh, I found years later that the uh, they, uh, they have satellites or something that record the number of lightning strikes. And that area has the highest frequency of lightning strikes of any place in the continental United States. Wow. Except for the Everglades. The Everglades has a bit more, but that's over water. Wow. So wow. that adds to another theory. What were they doing there? You know? Uh, so that area that has a high level of lightning strikes do, do you think it makes sense that they're observing that or is that do, is that why they were there do you have any thoughts about that well uh until up until a few years ago you know you walk down the rim road and you, if you see a tree that's been hit by lightning you can always see it it's a strip of bark that's just blasted out of there and it's all bare and it can actually still survive the lightning strike but it turns the the um sap to steam instantly and it just explodes out the wow. side of the uh, uh, tree blows the bark off but um, <clears throat> I was at uh, a yeah this guy's definitely a tree surgeon conference where this lady was I said what's this and she says that's fulgurite I said what, what's that and she says that's when lightning strikes the earth you've got millions of volts millions of degrees that form these crystals that aren't formed geologically. So I kind of leaned towards this theory that perhaps they were looking for fulgurite for a very unique kind of crystal uh, that would be formed by uh, that kind of blast of energy. I'd never heard of fulgurite before. Hmm. Can you pull up an image of that, Jamie? I'd like to see what that looks like. I know um, tritonite is something that happens when uh, it's, uh, they call it nuclear glass. It happens when there is uh, either a nuclear explosion or uh, whether when uh, asteroid impacts hit the Earth. Joe Rogan, like, you know, the, the amount of stuff that he learns through podcasts is on, on another level. He must have learned so much. He's such an intelligent guy. That's it right there. Well, these crystals oh, wow. are supposed to have very special properties for people who are into crystal stuff. But uh, what does um, that say there, Jamie? This is what happens. That's what can. Wow. Wow. Wild. It's beautiful, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really is. That's pretty wild. So you might, it might be that they were looking for that. Well, Could who be. knows? It may be, be something that they use for energy. What is that? What? That's really when lightning struck Santa created that thing? That's wild. Uh, 
That is wild. Look at that. It looks like a tree coming out of yeah. the sand. Yeah. Uh, I'm that's guessing nuts. that that was wet sand. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, well, it's right next to the beach. It must be wet. Uh -huh. That is crazy. <laughs> that's really that? wild. That's like antlers sticking out of the sand. That was so interesting, mate. I might have to see the whole thing. What do you reckon about it? Do you think that the he actually was abducted? Thank you so much for watching. If you did like the aliens and the UFOs and the freaky deaky, the paranormal, please subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.